Hi everyone, um, I'm your host Connor Cregan and you're watching Sims Tours and this is a record house edition. And this is a show where I take you on tours of famous houses that I rebuilt in Sims 4 because we're in quarantine and I have nothing better to do. Um, so on today's episode we'll be walking through the Buckwalter residence. Bum, ba, da, ba. Okay, so this famous house was designed by Hugh Newell Jacobson in 1980. Um, and there is more. Well, boom! How about that reveal? <laughs> so it was featured as a record house in the 1981 mid-May issue of Architectural Record, and it was also the cover girl for that issue. Um, when this house was first built, it was in like over 20 publications, um, and really just caused quite a stir, as you can see. Um, the, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, you know, multiple gabled roofs, the kind of repetitive theme. Um, this is very typical of Jacobson's architecture where he takes traditional forms and, you know, exaggerates them, manipulates them, and kind of puts them into this um, new, I'll say kind of like surreal space. Um, so this house was actually inspired by the utopian communities um, around it. It was originally built in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and a lot of the um, 19th century old, old houses there, they would start as a single family home, and then as there was a new addition to the family, um, they, they would add, you know, a, like a smaller addition, but in the same shape to kind of create this telescoping effect that we have here. Um, one way that Hugh Newell Jacobson updated this, though, was by adding windows um, <clears throat> around the sides and around the top to get light in throughout the day. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is, I think, considered one of Jacobson's probably greater works, um, which is why I decided to rebuild it in The Sims. Um, so let's get into it. Now, something that Jacobson is known for is playing not only with repetition, but also scale. Um, so in some houses, you know, he'll plant an oversized tree in the front yard to make it look smaller. And so I kind of did a similar thing here with using just a single front door, but making it really tall, just to kind of like, you know, let you know that things aren't always what they seem. Um, but let's head on in. Um, Okay, welcome to the house. Um, when I built this house, I asked friends who, uh, if anybody wanted to live here. So there's eight sims of people I know living in the house just to give it some new life. Uh, there goes Gabriella, there goes Mira. We'll see them throughout. Um, in the original design, there's a spiral staircase here, but Sims 4 doesn't have a spiral staircase. So I just kind of had to make do. Um, but let's, let's just get on the tour. Let's not waste time. Oh, I will say, just I took some creative license here in terms of decorating the front door to kind of bring that surreal element from the outside inside. I decided to make the inside look a little outside, if that makes sense. Just to kind of, you know, play with perceptions a little bit more because that's what I like to do. Um, and then of course, since, you know, there are eight people living here, I did give them... Uh, a big closet up in front for their shoes and jackets and whatnot. You know, you don't want to kind of have that stuff lying around this beautiful house. Um, but on the, the first room on our tour is the library. And this first floor floor plan, I really stuck to um, the original design. I wanted to try and keep it as as right on the money as I possibly could. So this is all pretty much to to proportion and everything like that. And as of October 2019, the house was on the market for $1.7 million. So if you want to save up and move to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and live in one of the most famous record houses, you know, it could be yours. Um, we have somebody napping on the couch. Don't mind them. I mean, if you're going to nap anywhere, the library is the place to do it. Um, some old CDs. If you want to listen to, I don't know, some Enya or... Sade or whatever. Um, okay. Walk through here into a kind of a little pantry closet moment. You know, once again, plenty of storage. It's a big house. You got lots of stuff. Um, and this leads us right into... Oh, hello, Jack. Um, this leads us right into the bright and beautiful kitchen. Now, this kitchen is pretty much exactly the layout in the original design. I think they may have renovated it once or twice, but 
according to the <laughs> the websites I looked at, this is how it looks. Um, actually, I think the oven might supposed to be where the dishwasher is, and the sink is supposed to be where the fruit is, but I like my layout better. Sorry, Hugh. Um, but yeah, plenty of wine, coffee, got it, you know, all the essentials, really. Um, but yeah, just a big, bright, beautiful kitchen. Little breakfast nook in the solarium, um, you know, get views out to the backyard, the fountains. We'll, we'll touch on that later, though. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Um, so then we'll, t you know, because you know, a lot of the people living in this house are artists and writers and, um, you know, th th that sort of creative individual. I decided they probably needed a, a workspace as well as a live space. So I decided to give them their own little home office. We got eight cute little laptops here for everybody to, you know, get on and send their emails and, and whatnot. Um, we also have the house pet, the goldfish. Her name is um, Daphne. So there's Daphne the goldfish. Um, we got a little uh, motivational poster here. You know, really got to, you know, keep them going in, in times like these. Um, but yeah, this is, and yeah, like I said, the original design, this was a big utility closet um, and uh, laundry room. But there are no laundry machines in Sims 4, go figure. So I turned it into an office. Um, and then this takes us to the back. So these are the two smallest houses of the telescope. And I turned this into an artist studio since we do have so many um, artistically inclined people living in the house. You know, did, wanted to give um, them a place to work as well. Um, in the original design, this was just a playroom for the kids. Um, I should say the original house was only a two bedroom and two bath, two half bath. Um, but since there are eight Sims living in it now, I... Um, I added some bedrooms. We'll check that out. Yeah, this is this is lovely. This gets really lovely eastern and northern light, which is great for painting, as we all know. And of course, when you're dealing with the oil paints, you want to keep a window open. Um, don't want anybody passing out. So, you know, I'm a very thoughtful designer. Um, and then here, we'll check out the bathroom. <laughs> or one of the bathrooms. <clears throat> Boom! Look at this. Now, as you'll see on the tour, I'm kind of known for my <laughs> out loud bathrooms. Um, I like a lot of color. I like bold statements, statement pieces um, in my bathrooms. You know, why why make them generic when you can really make them yours? And who doesn't love a floor to ceiling window looking right in on the bathroom? Um, but yeah, bathrooms are kind of my signature. This one is actually a little more staid. So you guys, uh, you guys, you guys just get ready. I'm not sure you're ready. Um, but yeah, walk again through the kitchen. And then we come into the formal dining room. Nobody, none of the people who live in this house ever eat in here. Um, I mean, sometimes they do, but I feel like that's kind of typical of all formal dining rooms. Nobody ever really eats in them. But this is pretty much true to the original design. There's a shelf running through. Um, you know, I kind of tried to keep a kind of Nice white, orange, gray, and black color story here. Um, and then the fountains outside, I wanted to kind of echo the tiering of the house with the tiering of the fountains. Just a little of my own um, design sensibility coming in. You know, I love a little, I love a little echo, a little mirroring. Oh, hi, Nick. Just hanging out, looking at the, uh, what was that, Damien Hurst? Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then here we have, excuse me, bud, the second half bath. And once again, you know, bold, green, um, patterns. You gotta love it. You, you gotta keep the eye entertained. I am so tired of all of these, like, this whole design trend. I don't know if you guys have noticed it, but it's like, like, the whole design is like, we're just gonna make everything beige. Everything's gonna be beige and taupe and dove and bone, and it's just gonna be a lot of like just shades of tan and I just think it's maybe the most boring thing on the planet is this kind of like like I love a nude palette don't get me wrong but for your house really like we want something um but here let's check out the formal living room you know you got the Warhol's lesser known otter series um but we'll go into the living room bum, 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 bum. and here's the formal living room once again I tried to uh be true to 
Hughes uh, design and interior furnishings as possible. So lots of places to sit and chat um, for various numbers of people. Um, access to the outdoor patio, uh, lovely fireplace, a piano. You know, you gotta have a piano. It's, <laughs> I know it's like so luxurious and like not everybody has a piano, but you should really get a piano. Everybody needs a piano. It's a beautiful instrument. And then actually a little quick note, in the original design, when they built this house, um, for some added privacy, Hugh Jacobson planted a bunch of dogwood trees out here, kind of fanning out to um, to kind of continue that arrow pattern. But in here, I just planted a bunch of Lily of the Valley because I like those spark formations. So there you go. Um, but yeah, this is uh, plenty of firewood, you know, bringing the white brick in here. I think there's nothing chicer than white brick. I know I'm like going off about a nude palette, but there's something about white brick that I just think is divine. Um, yeah, lovely space. Nobody really hangs out here either because there's no TV, typical. Um, but let's head upstairs. Now you guys are going to laugh at how I walk upstairs. It's not cute, but it is, it does work. Oh, see, there I am. Um... And so the second floor has all the bedrooms. Now, like I said, the, the original house was only a master and a kid's bedroom, which they shared. And then the kids had their own bathroom and um, the master had its own bath, of course. But since there are eight Sims living in this house, I decided to cut the master in half to fit more and add a bedroom over um, the dining room. So let's check out the master though first. Ah, look at that. Beautiful, if I do say so myself. Just something bright, airy, did a very light, soft pastel blue palette. Um, gave everybody twin beds so there's no awkwardness. You know, some people have different sleeping habits. I don't want to, you know, police that. I just want to make sure everybody has a nice, relaxing night. Um, this frame cluster, I thought, really, <laughs> I mean, it's just such a great message. Like. Inhale, exhale. I mean, I think we can all really learn a lot from that. Um, and then fabulous views with some screen for privacy. Um, and then as a part of the original design, which I decided to keep, the master bedroom does come with a fabulous walk-in closet. I mean, besides a piano, everybody needs a big chocolate walk-in closet. Plenty of clothes, mirrors, all that. Have a little fashion show. You know, do that thing where you're trying on a bunch of different outfits and your friends are like, uh-uh. But then they're like, uh-huh. And then you go out on the town and um, find love or a pizza. Okay. <laughs> As I was saying, um, I cut the master in half to make room for all of the roommates. So what was originally kind of a sitting room within the master, I made a second bedroom that they kind of share. Um, this one I did all kind of in green and um, just for kind of a serene space, uh, radio for NPR, views of the pool or views of the fountain, um, views of the garden. You know, it's um, pretty, pretty, pretty cool, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Um, and then they have, of course, closer access to the master bath. Um, Four people to a bath I know is not ideal, so I tried to give them plenty of counter space and floor space um, to kind of, you know, get their business done. Um, you got this fabulous bathtub, this state-of-the-art bath with views looking out into the, the backyard, candles. Um, let's see. Oh, you know, a, a standing shower if that's more your speed um, with another tub. So, you know, it's it, there's a lot going on here, a lot of plumbing. Um, and then, of course, for the toilet, you know, I love a statement bathroom. So we're going to Athens, baby. Yes, we are going down. We're going to Greece. We are going back to the gods, sit on the throne of Zeus. You know, I got to say, uh, my Achilles heel is uh, making a fabulous bathroom. Got some candles there because, you know, sometimes you need candles right next to the toilet to uh, hide the evidence and plenty of reading material. Um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and, and of course, right out onto the fountain, very Greek, you know, um, I guess. But yeah, so, uh, sue me. I love it. But let's go back out to... Da, da, da. 
And if anybody has any questions for me, the best way to reach me is on Instagram at Connor Cregan. Um, so if you have any like specific questions about the house or you know previous builds, please reach out to me. I freaking love talking about this stuff. Um, we got another Warhol here and Ansel Adams, beautiful. Um, a Bruce Nauman. You know, the, <laughs> we got a lot of art going on. Um, let's go into the bedroom that I added. It's really simple, but just a simple, pretty bad, uh, sorry, this is the bedroom. Um, uh, now we're right above the dining room and originally I believe this would be open to the dining room and, um, there'd like be a skylight, but we didn't do that today. Instead, I just gave this fabulous view to a couple friends. Um, and then they of course have their own bathroom. Uh, I think she's done it again. Orange walls, green. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Who wants like those weird, ugly glass bowl sinks? You know, you know what I'm talking about where there's like, oh, I can't stand them when it's like, you could have a nice proper, you know, kind of old uh, Victorian lime green chartreuse sink with a clawfoot tub and azul tile. I mean, I could go on, but I won't. All right. Da, da, da. And now we're going to check out the bedroom um, that was originally part of the plan um, for the kitties. Ooh, um, this I made specifically for my friends Tom and Gabriella, who have a very specific um, taste, hence <laughs> the black and red kind of quasi-gothic moment. Um, also, Gabriella, my friend, asked for really good art um, in her bedroom, so I gave her a lot of really good art. <laughs> um, hey, maybe it's your thing. I don't know. And then, of course, they have their own bathroom. And this one, I mean, i got to say, I think she's done it again. Um, all red glazed tile, black and white toilet and tub, red towel, um, views of the harbor. You know, and this may seem like a very simple and perhaps reductive and definitely basic design tool, but... I do rooms by like color and I think it works. Like make a red room, make a teal room, make a pink room, make an orange room and it's just call it a day. Um, let's see what can I, what time is that? Well, let's go upstairs to the, um, to the game room. Originally in the design, this was a study, um, but I decided to make it a game room. Oh, look, look at Jessica. She is really, yeah. You know, dance like nobody's watching. Who gives a, who gives a crap? Um, but yeah, this is just general game room. Um, you know, plenty of books, a giant TV, I don't know. iPad, um, the whole thing with a frame cluster, uh, built-in bar for entertaining. Um, oh, hi, Mira. And then here's a bathroom. I don't want to walk in there just yet because Jess is using it. I don't want to interrupt that. Um, but yeah, in the original design, this was like a kind of a study. Um, but I think they have since converted it into a TV room. So once again, if you're saving up that 1.7 million, this could be your future. Um, and then, of course, I added another bathroom. Hi. Yes. There you go. Um, but yeah, this, this bathroom, I wanted it to make... Like, I wanted to just be like a grotto, you know, um, something very serene, even though you're three stories high. Um, but yeah, so this house has, my, with my renovations, it has three bedrooms, uh, four full baths, and two half baths. So great people. I feel like they're pretty, pretty stocked. Um, instead of walking down these stairs, I think I'm just going to scoot on down save some time. Sorry if anybody's getting car sick. Okay. Oh, I have no reflection. Eh, whatever. Okay, stupid. Um, oh, it's nighttime. Has it been that long? Well, here, let's go outside and check out the backyard. Oh, yeah. Nighttime on the patio. How divine. Um, so this runs pretty much the length of the house. Um, plenty of lounging area. Um, I'm not sure if this fountain was part of the original design, but it, it's 
It's part of the house now. Um, oh. Somebody... Mmm. Just gonna leave those out. Oh, and we got some uh, dirty dishes. Cool. Okay. I mean, it's not like there's a tour going on or anything, but anyways. Ah, thank God Architectural Digest isn't here. No offense. Um, but here, let's take a moonlit walk through the garden really quick. Yeah. Who doesn't love a little garden? Um, and then I added a proper pool in my rebuild of this house. Um, and a little, little romantic bench under the hawthorn tree. Um, hydrangeas, wildflowers, the whole nine. And then we'll come into, this is, we'll, we'll come up to the garage. Now the garage in the original design is a little closer to the house and kind of like directly connected to the kitchen by a breezeway, I believe. But I decided to make them a little more separate and make room for this rose garden, which you can't really see in the moonlight. But just trust me that it's there. And then here we have the garage, you know, dad's garage. Got the Mustang for showing off the minivan for errands, and of course, plenty, plenty of gnomes. <laughs> yeah, there's a, we got the gnomes. Um, and here, let's take another moon. I can't believe it's already nighttime. I feel like we started this tour right in the morning, but whatever. <laughs> and so now you kind of get the, uh, the other side of the house where we've been throughout the tour, the kitchen, the studio, um, you know, dining room, all that. <laughs> Let's go this way. Gosh, it's so dark. I wish it, I wish it was daylight, but what are you going to do? Sometimes tours just take all day. But yeah, again, if you have any questions, um, please DM me at Connor Cregan on Instagram. Um, I, this is the fourth house I rebuilt. The first one was John Krasinski and Emily Blunt's Brownstone in Brooklyn. And then I um, rebuilt uh, Josef Luis Sert's uh, Casa Yuta from Ibiza, Spain. And then I did Architectonica's Pink House in Miami. And then I did this, um, you know, Hugh, Hugh Newell Jacobson uh, Buckwalter residence in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. I hope it was as fun for you as it was for me. I really, I'm such a sucker for this stuff. I know it's so stupid, but I can't resist it. Um, and there's the nighttime shot of, of the bedrooms and whatnot. But yeah, um, I do these tours live on Instagram Live, um, which is always really fun because people can comment and ask questions and kind of be part of the conversation. And then for the next tour, I'm also going to be doing it on Twitch. Um, so I'll be doing it on Twitch and Instagram Live. Plenty of opportunities to watch um, and, you know, comment. And, you know, I, I, I got to love, you got to love a peanut gallery. So um, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for the next one. See you latte.